Miles Morales was told the way that things were going to be. He was going to sit in Miguel O'Hara's dimension, do nothing, and allow his father to die. This was what was written for him, he was told. It's an important part of his story. If he tried to stop it, it would result in the collapse of his entire universe, killing everyone, including his father. For this reason, it was a no-brainer. He needs to stay here and let what happens to his father happen. He can't have his cake and eat it too, he's told. Miles doesn't agree with this. He breaks out of his prison and the chase is on. Hundreds upon hundreds of Spider-Men descend upon Miles, trying to apprehend him. As the chase is happening, Miguel spills the beans on the entire situation. Miles' story is the only one that started as an anomaly. The spider that bit him was from a different dimension entirely, and it was a complete fluke. He wasn't supposed to be Spider-Man. You don't belong here. You never did. Miles thinks back to what his mother told him before he left. She told him that his family loves him, that they accept him, and that they care about him. She told him that she's worried that wherever he goes, those big shots there won't love him the way that his family does. But even though they may not care about him the same as his family does, he shouldn't let anyone, ever, under any circumstance, tell him that he doesn't belong. And now Miles is in the midst of a chase, being pursued by the group that earlier on, all he wanted was to be accepted by them. He thought that they would help cure his loneliness, as he carries the secret of being Spider-Man that he can only share with others who would understand, other Spider-Man. But he realizes that in order to be accepted into this group, he would have to do something against his morals. He would have to stand by while something bad happened in order to save a whole lot of people. It's the philosophical dilemma of the trolley experiment. But Spider-Man is Spider-Man. He also has built into his personality that he can do it all. He can have his cake and eat it too. He can save his father and the universe. It may not make sense now, but he can find a way. Even if it means getting removed from the cool crowd forever, and always being lonely, he has to do it. He looks Miguel in the eyes and says that everyone has always told him how things are going to be. But nah, I'm going to do my own thing. The cost of this could be a lifetime of loneliness for Miles, but he realizes that he doesn't need this cool crowd in order to be complete. He won't sacrifice his values in order to be accepted. Nathaniel Brandon has a quote that's always resonated with me. If my aim is to prove I'm enough, the project goes on to infinity, because the battle was already lost on the day I conceded the issue was debatable. The societal zeitgeist has always said that there are certain behaviors that are deemed as valuable, and others that are not. There's things that make people cool, and there's things that make people outcasts. This is always changing and shifting, and society used to say that in order to be cool you need to be attractive, fashionable, captain of the football team, or the top cheerleader. Now there has been a shift lately, with its aim originally being pure, that Obviously, not everyone can be a captain of the football team because there's only one spot. Not everyone can be top cheerleader. So let's not judge people on that. Why don't we accept everyone for who they are simply because they have value by being them? This movement of acceptance, however, quickly morphed into something different. It became less about accepting who you are if you don't have a tight cheerleader body, if you aren't the richest in your group, if you aren't that captain. It went away from accepting who you are and became more of an assault on the traditional things that were seen as cool. Instead of acceptance and equality, and bringing everyone up on equal footing, it's just trying to switch the scales around. Now, tight body cheerleaders are fat phobic, and the captain of the football team is a tyrant. The new cool people are the overweight queens and the non-binary. It may look like the paradigm is changing, but it's not. It's just two sides of the same coin. It's a group trying to say what's in and what's not. It's what we've seen since the beginning. Just as how the opposite of Julius Caesar wasn't Pompey the Great. Those guys had the same ambitions, but just on different sides. The true antithesis to Julius Caesar was Cato, a man coming from a completely different paradigm. The ideal paradigm is to be more like Miles Morales. He realizes that he doesn't need to be accepted by the in crowd in order to be worthy. He listens to his mama. I, I kept thinking about what you said. I let him have it, mom. I beat them all. I know how strong I am now. I'm strong because of you and dad okay, and us. The ideal is to be the most you and not worry about how that is taken. Authenticity is what you should be striving for. You don't need to prove to anyone your value. You are valuable simply by virtue of being you. You are enough. You don't have to prove anything. This is the basis for true self-esteem. 
Some people really are that competitive masculine who will be the captain of the football team. And some people are into video games or philosophy. We need all these people, and we need diversity. You can look at all the ways you don't measure up, but it shouldn't be to society's standards, as those are fickle and ever-shifting. Who you should be measuring yourself against is how authentically you're being yourself. How much progress are you making down your own path? Not the path that society tells you to go down, but your path. How well do you even understand what that path is? Underneath the layers of it all. Underneath all the masks. Now, remember there is a path for all of us. It's written to the logos. The course of a warrior's destiny is unalterable. The challenge is how far he can go and how impeccable he can be within those rigid bounds. It's a paradox. Yes, we should strive for improvement. Constantly. We should try to be better today than we were yesterday. But also, realize that there's nothing to prove and you are enough. Miles no longer needs to be accepted by the spider people because he knows who he is and he knows that his family will accept him no matter what. Unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, that's what you need. If you have it from your family, great. If you don't, you need to have it for yourself. It's a losing game trying to fit into the ever-changing standards of others. Chasing that can only go so far and it never ends in a good place. And ironically, when you commit to doing your own thing, and not worrying about whether others are going to accept you or not, you carry yourself with a swagger that other people then try to emulate. Remember this, if they can give you approval, they can take it away. Approve of yourself. You are enough. I hope you liked that video. Here at Project Stoic, we are focused on creating videos around Stoicism, philosophy, spirituality, all wrapped under the umbrella of storytelling with contemporary lessons. Now, although this channel is new, we do have over 165,000 followers over on TikTok talking about the same stuff. So you know what that means? That means I'm a, I'm a, I'm a TikToker. I'm a TikToker. But this YouTube channel is new, so if you'd like to support, help grow it, consider subscribing, liking the video, and of course, watch more. You know, anything to boost us up in the algorithm. Happy you're here. I hope you learn a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.